Hey, how's it going everybody? If you've been watching this channel over the past couple of weeks or months, then you will know that I absolutely love to use VS Code together with GitHub Copilot. Matter of fact, adding GitHub Copilot to my workflow has been the single greatest improvement to my development speed that I've experienced in years. But just recently, a new code editor has come along that has changed the game for me yet again. And yeah, we're talking about Cursor. Cursor is an AI-first code editor that comes with really many awesome built-in features. It is a fork of VS Code. That means if you've been using VS Code, switching over to it is pretty intuitive and easy. And in addition to that, you can choose whatever large language model you want to work with. So to me, it's no surprise that this tool has gained so much traction in the development community because things that used to take weeks to accomplish now just take a couple of seconds and a few prompts. In this video, I wanna go into the top 10 features of Cursor so that you can make the most of this tool. So let's jump right in. The first thing that I want to show you is how you can generate code snippets really quickly. I bootstrapped this Next.js application using create next app and deleted all the boilerplate code. And let's say we want to create a hero section. So at the moment, uh, our website looks something like this. And let's say that instead of get started, we want to have a small hero section. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to delete all this code. I'm going to press control K. And then all I'm going to write is create a simple hero section. And it's going to generate the code, which I can go ahead and accept using control and enter and save. And once I do that, you'll see that on the website, we will have like this very simple hero section. So generating code is super easy, and that leads me on to the next thing, which is editing on multiple lines at the same time. So let's go and say that we want to add a blinking effect to the subtitle. We're going to press Control K and tell it editing instructions by saying, okay, add blinking subtitle. And you'll see that just in a moment, it goes ahead and edits the code snippet that I highlighted by adding this new paragraph over here, uh, saying that it is the blinking subtitle and it has correctly added the Tailwind class animate blink. Now, this is not a default Tailwind class. We'll see in a moment that we can go ahead and add that in the global CSS file. But what I just want you to realize is how quick and easy it is to make editing adjustments to this small code snippet. So now the next thing that we would do is add this animate blink, which was added by cursor and add it to the global CSS file. So I'm gonna go ahead and open global CSS and I'm going to put my cursor somewhere at the bottom and press down a few lines and you'll see that the next thing it already does automatically is make the suggestion to add animate blink. So it has the entire code base's context and it just knows that this would be the next sensible thing to add. And all I have to do is press tab. So that's the sort of next thing which I want to cover, which is all you need to do is press tab on and on to accept the code uh, changes it makes um, really quickly. So now if I go ahead and save this and the page.js file, if I go ahead and chain, accept the changes and save it, you will see that over in the file, we have this blinking subtitle, which was added really quickly. The next thing that I want to show you is something that they call smart rewrites. Basically what that does is it allows you to write plain English text, which is translated to code. So let's say we go ahead and delete this animation over here. And then instead we write out um, add animation that makes the text blink. And you'll see on the right hand side over here, it directly gives you the right code that you can use by simply pressing tab. So all I did just now was simply press tab and it has added the code into the space where the uh, text was written. So back on the website, you can see that the animation is still there. So it has added the correct code, which is great. The built-in chat window in Cursor is also really powerful. To open it up, simply press Control and L and you get it opened up in this sidebar over here. Now you can go ahead and simply paste some sort of question such as what is the MB8 class in Tailwind? And it simply goes ahead and answers the question for you. 
And the cool thing is you can even choose what model you use in order to answer this question. So if you're not happy with the answer which Claude has given you, you can go to this drop down over here and click any model which you want to use. So you're not limited to ChatGPT as you are with GitHub Copilot. The chat window also features a history section where you can see all the prompts that you have used in the past. And another cool thing that you should know is that whenever you highlight a snippet of code and then press Ctrl and L, it will take whatever you have highlighted and put it into the chat window directly, which is super helpful when you want to ask a question concerning a specific block of your code. The next thing that you need to be able to use is the references because they are super helpful when you want to find some sort of specific implementation in a large code base. So you can go ahead and press mention and you can choose whatever sort of context you want to give it. So let's say we would be looking for an implementation of the metadata within our code base. So what we could do is we could go to code base and subsequently we can write something like where is the meta data implemented and that will use the entire code base as the context and it will give you an answer where it is implemented so right here in the answer you can see that it says that the metadata is implemented in the layout.js file so if we go ahead and navigate to the layout.js file you can see that it is in fact correct in the layout.js file we have the metadata right there but what's cool is that the references are even more powerful than just that. You can choose any sort of context which you want. So if you don't want to use the code base as context, you can also use a Git repository, you can use a website, you can use other folders and files. So these references are really helpful when you want to control what context is used to answer your prompt. The next thing that I want to show you is how we can use images within our prompts. So let's say I have a very simple image which shows me some sort of text on the left side and an image on the right side. And I want to ask Cursor how we could build a layout that is like this. So I'm going to go ahead and take this image and drag it over into the chat. And you can now see that this image is included in the chat. And I'm simply going to ask, how can I build this layout? And within just a few seconds, you can see that Cursor has clearly understood what we want from it, and it has given us the code snippet which would enable us to create this layout, which is super cool. One thing that I always get confused with is writing terminal commands. Now, Cursor makes this super easy by adding a chat window within the terminal. So if I go ahead and press Control-K, you can see that at the bottom I get the small instruction window. And if I now go ahead and write something like create a new file called hello in the main folder, you can see that it has created this new um, command. And if I go ahead and press enter, you can see that on the left hand side, it has created this new file called hello. So that is also really helpful, especially if you're someone like me who always forgets their terminal commands. Quick questions is another really cool feature which the Cursor team has added, and it allows you to ask questions really quickly, as the name suggests. So in order to make use of it, you can simply highlight a snippet of code that you don't understand and press Control K. And you can simply ask your question something along the lines of, what does this do? And then you can see right below, it will give you the option to ask this quick question. And that is simply going to answer your question within the editor window. So no need to open the, side uh, the sidebar chat. You'll have the answer directly within your editor. All right, I'm going to leave it here for this video, but feel free to let me know down in the comments below which features you think are the most powerful ones and which ones I missed out on. And that being said, we'll see each other in the next video.